Dan Perry here again, and welcome back to TCPIP Basics, Part 17, Building a Table of Networks in a Spreadsheet. In this video, we're going to actually see how to automate some of that process by building a table. Once you've got the basic tables built, then you just need, all you'll have to do is make your changes to the number of bits you're borrowing to update the network, or the spreadsheet to show all your networks. Okay, what I've done is gone ahead and built a basic spreadsheet for us. And in this basic spreadsheet, I've already put in our network address. I've got a location for the bits borrowed, bits remaining, and uh, the networks, number of networks, the IP address. Now, we're only going to use the put the last octet in because, again, we're still working with a Class C. Subnet mask and then our columns for what we want in the way of uh, storing. We've got our network number, our network address, broadcast address, first usable and last usable IP address. Now I've also increased the font sizes some so that uh, it's a little easier to see hopefully on the video. And what we're going to do is start building this network. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, in this case, we're going to borrow three bits. So I'll put a three there. <clears throat> now, I could go ahead and I know three bits gives us eight networks. But instead, I'm going to go ahead and put a formula in. So if I then change the number of bits I borrow, it's going to change the... Uh, information and recalculate. So I'm going to say, well, that is equal to 2 raised to the power of the number of bits borrowed, which is cell B2. And when I enter that, it calculates the 8. Now, how many bits are remaining? Again, we're working with a class C, so we start, or we, we're borrowing bits if we borrow 3 from the 8 bits we have to borrow, we just subtract that off. So I'll say equals 8 minus, and then again, sorry, again use the cell that stores the number of bits borrowed. I started hitting the uh, number pad instead, but that will give us the 5 that is remaining. <clears throat> now, how many IP addresses? Well, if you remember, that is equal to 2 raised to the power of the number of bits remaining. So in this case, that is the cell that has the 5 in it. And that gives us 32 IP addresses per. Now, let's just to see how that will work. If I were to change that and borrow, say, uh, 5 bits, change that, you see here it changes the number of networks to 32 bits remaining to 3, and 8 address, IP addresses per network. So let me go back and make that a 3 again. <clears throat> now, the subnet mask, I'm going to type that in. Uh, just, there, I could work on a formula that would calculate it, and if you really were going to do this a lot, you might do that. But I'm going to go ahead and just type in the uh, subnet mask. For this one and I would have to manually change that. Now <clears throat> for the number of networks I could also say well there are eight networks and I could build a macro that would automatically copy everything down to the right number of networks but instead what I'm going to do is just use uh, the dragging method. I've got a zero and one in so it shows the pattern and if I just drag down far enough it will fill in with the network numbers there, 0 through 7. Now, for my network address, <clears throat> I know the first network address always on, and we're only going to again put in the last octet, starts at 0, and then since there are 32 IP addresses per network, it's going to add 32 to it. Well, you might also notice that by starting our network number at zero, if there are 32 IP addresses per, zero times anything is zero, one times anything is itself, and two, so we know that from our previous examples, the first network in this case would be started IP address zero, second at 32, third at 34. Well, network one, 
starts at 32. Network 2, 64. Well, that's the network number times the number of IP addresses. So I'm going to enter that in as a formula. So I'm going to say that is equal to the network number multiplied by the number of IP addresses. So I'll go up to that cell. But I have to lock that in place. And I do that with absolute addressing. So I put dollar signs before the E and the 3 in this case. If you're not sure how this works, you need to probably brush up on your spreadsheets. Since this isn't a spreadsheet class, uh, I'm not going to go into that in detail. Uh, now, the broadcast address is going to be essentially the same thing, except subtract 1 from it, because the net next network would be 1 from more. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so in this case, well, it's 0 plus the number of IP addresses minus 1. So I can put a formula in here as well. I can say that's equal to the this cell that's got the uh, number, the starting address. I can then add to it the number of IP addresses per network. And again, I need to use that absolute addressing to lock it in place and then subtract 1 from it. And that gives me 31 for this one. Now, similar for the first usable, it's always going to be one more than the network address. So that formula would be equal to the network address plus one. And the last usable, that's going to be, I could do it a couple of ways. In my case, I'm going to do say that's equal to the broadcast address minus one, because it's always one less than the broadcast address. So now I've got those entered with formulas. If I now highlight those cells and copy them down, now I've got my table and 0, 32, 64 for the network addresses ending at 224 for the last one. Broadcasts 31, 63 up to 255 first and last usable. So now I have a table in this case for seven. If I were to change the number of bits borrowed, all I would need to do is change the number of rows that I have for the number of networks and either copy or delete some of these networks and change my subnet mask. So hopefully that will show you a good way of automating the uh, process. You build this spreadsheet, save it, and then you can use it over and over again. Next time we're going to be looking at the OSI model.